for spiritual entrepreneurs. Join our spiritual family at spiritualbizmagazine.com. Hi, I'm Kimberly Masca, your host of Spiritual Biz Chat for Spiritual Biz Magazine. We have something a little special for you for this month, the month of May. We have a guest interviewer, Daniel Pape. Daniel is the senior writer for Spiritual Biz Magazine and my spiritual partner, and he is bringing to you the story of Corey Good. Now, you may recognize Corey from the Cosmic Disclosure Show on Gaia TV with David Wilcock. Corey is an intuitive empath, and he has direct connection with the Blue Avians, who are six density beings that are here to share a message with us about how to raise our vibration so that we can have a huge impact on the planet. Without any further ado, here is Daniel and Corey. Uh, first of all, Corey, it's it's really good to see you again. Thanks for being here, man. Hey, it's good to see you again. You know, one of the things that uh, has been on my mind, it, it, it's interesting because our audience, a lot of them know you, but some of them don't because they're in a different field. They're focused. It's more of a business, spiritual business. And I was wondering if you would just share with our readers, you know, your your story and how you got here just so they can understand. Yeah, it's kind of a long and somewhat difficult to understand story so <clears throat> but I will start off with um, when I was around the age of six I was pulled into a, a secret military program that was designed to locate children that had certain abilities and enhance those abilities for use in unacknowledged programs so apparently one of my grandfathers had taken part in something called Operation white coat in 1944, I believe, is when he took part. That program was to take various soldiers that were conscientious objectors or otherwise and expose them to different nerve agents, viruses, uh, to help uh, come up with a plan to inoculate the soldiers. But it turns out that they were also doing genetic manipulation before we officially really discovered genetics. And uh, apparently this was a multi-generational program that he signed up for unwittingly. So that's how I originally got into these unacknowledged type programs. I had a lot of family uh, that are military, so that also uh, worked, I guess, for me or against me, depending on how you want to look at it. I was uh, brought up in these programs, being given various different types of training to enhance abilities. And then um, when I got to the age of almost 17, I found out what they were training me for. I was tra being trained to be drafted into a secret military, basically a, a Navy secret space program. It was called Solar Warden. So that's where I got my start. I ended up doing what they call a 20 and back. This is where things get a little uh, hard for people to follow. Uh, you commit 20 years, you serve 20 years, and at the end of that 20 years, they age regress you and then time regress you to right around a few minutes of the point where you were taken to serve to serve the 20 and back. Hmm. Clearly, there's a lot of uh, technology out there that the masses are clearly not aware of. Yeah, it's a pharmaceuticals technology that uh, people are not aware of. So anyway, I uh, pretty much David Wilcock and I started doing a show called Cosmic Disclosure on Gaia TV. It's, uh, you know, kind of a little obscure show that popped up and then it became wildly popular. Remarkable. Outstanding. And I've had a chance, as you know, you and I have spent a little time chatting and I watched the show. Uh, I binge watched it, you know, just really just absorbed it. And it is absolutely, from my perspective, verifiable in many ways what you're saying. At first, as you said, it's a little bit, how does, you know, to grasp this is a bit, you know, it's, it's, it's not only out of the norm, but it's, it's something that, you know, we've been so conditioned to believe this is the way it is. You know, there, there, there is no outside of what we know. You have to suspend your current understanding of reality to begin to understand what is going on in reality. And I'm actually enjoying doing that more and more lately. You know, it's, uh, it's a trip. Yeah. It's a fun trip too. It's revealing. Thank you for sharing that with us. So you're in the process, if I understand correctly, of creating really a media empire so, so you know so you can share your message on a larger scale and I find it interesting being out here in Los Angeles I've been in the entertainment business most of my life and many people talk about creating uh, companies and but how did you find the courage to actually commit to creating a, a business seated in higher consciousness of all things well interestingly enough it wasn't even on my radar a year ago 
I was sort of uh, pushed to start bringing the story, well, the information of oneness, of raising your consciousness outside of this little esoteric community, basically to stop preaching to the choir and to find ways to bring seeds to the consciousness of wider super consciousness. I found that artists and cinematographers have such an ability to capture emotion and ideas in such a short period of time that will communicate with all these different personality types in, in different ways. So if we can, we're forming a basically a publishing company and a media company. We're going to be doing all sorts of events. We're going to be doing a, a lot. We're going to call it something along the lines of consciousness renaissance. That's going to be, that's the theme. We're right now, humanity is poised for a consciousness renaissance, and it's going to take all of the different entrepreneurs out there who are in the esoteric community to help plant those seeds in different ways, in ways that their talents reflect to help the super consciousness raise in vibration, which is, is, you know, that's what is the most thing needed on the planet right now. If, if we did that, everything else would fall in place. Agreed. Yeah, that's, that's really the crux of it, you know, to raise the consciousness. And uh, I like the name. Yeah, we plan, we plan on helping people publish lots of different types of books, uh, plan on doing a lot of different types of, you know, documentaries and, and video series for, you know, Netflix, History Channel. We've got a lot in the works. It's, it's, really, it's really exciting right now. The, the professionals that are being drawn in as well are beyond top notch. We have over 33 people on our team now. And they're all top notch in their field. So it's the way it's coming together has been has been very organic. But like I said, a year ago, it wasn't even on my radar. But now, yes, we're looking to move our group to Boulder, Colorado and start a corporation. I think it's fair to say you've been holding this frequency for long enough where like attracts like. That's law of attraction 101. You're attracting more and more to you. Amen to that. Yeah. All of us have been, you get chills, your hair stands up all the time, all the different synchronicities that occur. It's I'm right there with you. As you know, I just got back from my trip and everything was synchronizing. I was out in the Caribbean doing my thing and, and uh, it, it's remarkable. And, it, and it's, one of my favorite words is momentum. And when you have momentum going, nurture it, care for it, keep, you know, it's our job to stay in alignment with that because it's, 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 it's powerful if we keep, you know, focused. Yeah. And, and, and don't make more work of it than we have to. I find just relax and stay focused. Yeah. We've got the unstoppable force going. We just need to avoid the unmovable objects. Well said, man. You know, money is, a, is an interesting subject because it's touchy when it comes to, you know, uh, spirituality. You know, in the entertainment business, it's, it's, it's normal. You have to have show business. You have to have the business and spiritual business. When we're trying to share a message, I find that the business is simply the vehicle, the platform in which to reach more people and to create a a balanced flow of giving and taking and more and more spiritual entrepreneurs today I'm finding are understanding that that they they understand that money and being of service is all about abundance and the more abundant we are the more tools we have to be able to share what are your thoughts on that well i yeah i agree uh, and a lot in our a lot of people in our community get sort of shamed you know i mean it happened to me if, if i made a little bit of money you know doing the show you're selling disclosure you're you know, you're selling out, but like it or not, we're stuck in this Babylonian money magic system and we can use it to our benefit. We don't have to use it to manipulate and for greed. We can use it to spread light and raise consciousness. It using the tool of your enemy has always been a, uh, uh, a practice of warriors. So, um, you know, we've had the monetary system used against us for millennia. It's time for us to kind of grab it with both hands and use it as a tool to get us to a point where we can move to contributionism and, and that kind of a thing. But right now, we've got to work with the foundation we have. I, I couldn't agree more. You know, it's even that you, when you were saying that, it made me think of martial arts. You know, when energy is coming at you, you simply, you know, you're not trying to push yeah. against anything. I don't resist. I yeah. simply just. It's an Akita principle. You, you reflect the energy that comes at you. Yeah, that's what I thought of. You know. As, as an author and as a writer and here I am, you know, with, with what I do in this in this field and, I'm, you know, this word paradigm shift has been 
you know, in my consciousness for so long, and I've been using these words because I'm aware of it, but sometimes people in, in my arena, they'll say, or even outside the arena, family members and, and people going, well, if there's a paradigm shift, where is it? In other words, other than, oh, it's in consciousness, can I see any tangible things of what, when is, where is the paradigm shift? So I was wondering if you would share a little bit about your message, you know, like in, in this paradigm shift is what is it, what do you really see happening from your perspective in this movement? Well, the paradigm shift, I, I don't see where it's not happening, actually. You know, the people that don't see where it, where, where is it happening? Wow. You see with all the energetic changes that are occurring on, in our solar system, the, the behavior we're seeing in the media and uh, just when you go to work, you see people, are, they seem triggered. It seems like people are being forced, you know, to deal with old issues right now. A lot of old stuff is popping up. So you're going to notice people being quite agitated around you. I, I mean, that's one of the things I see. I see an opening of minds that is occurring at a very exponential rate. People that would normally buy what the news says, you know, hook, line, and sinker. These people are now, you know, logging onto the Internet and trying to get their news from different sources, uh, which is important because you know the media is a major control system. And one of the first signs of a, a great renaissance, I believe, is that people are pulling away from that control system slowly but steadily. It's well said again because I agree. Where in my circle, you know, I'm feeling and seeing all this, you know, it's paradigm shift happening. And I, like you, I'm saying, how could you not see it? But sometimes people, you know, more of a logical mind or a you know, more of a, a tangible type focus would ask me, well, can you point to anything specific? Yeah, you get caught up in that rat race. It's kind of hard to to see some of these things. But I think that the more we focus on the vibrational reality of things, which is the core of, of everything, frequency, that we begin to see the manifestation of it. From my perspective, human beings, we are uh, translators of vibration through our senses. So sometimes if you're focused and you're able to to translate that vibration, you will see it in your in, through your sensory perception. Oh my goodness, we well, are in a paradigm shift. We're basically just modulators or antenna. Exactly, we we transmit and we receive. Fascinating, man. Well, well done. You know, this whole uh, paradigm shift to me is something that I'm I'm so engulfed in, and I want to know what can we do to help if, if everyone's out there saying, you know, I do feel it, and I want to do the best I can. From my perspective, it's going inside. And just taking taking your own power and, and aligning with, you know, remembering first who you really are, which is consciousness. That's what it's all about. But could you share with our readers what you, from your perspective, what can they do? Well, exactly what you said, actually. It all comes back to going inside and doing the inner work. Once you start doing that inner work, people are going to start noticing. People are going to notice you go through a metamorphosis. And if they're hurting in their life. They're going to want to know how, you know, what, what are you doing? And the more you share with them and the more that seeps into their consciousness, the more they see you being consistent. That is how you start changing the world one person at a time. But that first person you change, has, it's got to be yourself. Is there anything you want to share with the readers or anything that's on your mind? If we can go into it a little bit about the Blue Avians and, and their message for us. Yeah, the, the Blue Avians, for those who don't know, they're a six density social memory complex, for the lack of a better word. Some people want to call them ETs or aliens. From the Law of One book, sometimes we get a little bit of that info? Yes, and uh, uh, apparently these, this Blue Avian group is tied in very closely with the Law of One. Yeah, they have confirmed that. Oh, that's good to know, because I've been reading that, and I've been wondering. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. So The Blue Avians, basically, they have come here not to save humanity or in, or any of that type of thing. They've come here to kind of even the playing field and give us a message that, listen, you all have these religions. All of the tenets of these religions are to stop treating each other horribly, you know, stop manipulating each other. Like in the law of one, human beings have a very hard time um, figuring out the difference between control and love. A lot of times we'll control something thinking that we love it or that it's an act of love when it's not. So, I mean, um, the, the Blue Avians basically delivered a message that they think that we should work on forgiving ourselves and forgiving others, which will stop the wheel of karma, to work on changing ourselves from the inside out, raising our vibration, 
And as I stated, this will change the world one person at a time. But it all comes back to our, doing the work ourselves. And, you know, there's no need to abandon our current belief systems or religions. We already have those ideas and tenets in them. We just need to do it. Exactly. And if I'm getting this right, it sounds very much in line with the religions of the world that were based on love, the teachings of Jesus, the teachings of Buddha, that we're not abandoning or substituting one thing for another. It's just simply getting it together in a way that we can understand it instead of being this uh, obscure passages. It's just kind of putting it in a, in a more clear and concise way. That's, that's one of the most beautiful things. A lot of people, I think they hesitate, they approach with caution when these new things come up and I'm, I'm you know, and, and they throw around strange words, you know, when people say to me, and I, and this word really bothers me to say, well, cult. And I'm like, no, because it's, it's not anything different from what we're talking about. This is, it's the it's the most beautiful teachings in the world that we know today. So it's not changing anything. To most people, anything outside of their belief system is an, is a cult. You know, I, I've used um, this example almost at nauseum, but I'm going to use it again. The way I guess the way we go through life when we start off, we don't we don't know anything, and we're picking up little grains of information from the ground around us little grains of experiences and we put those in a little dish and grind them together to form a lens and we hold that lens distortions and all up to any light source or information that comes to us so any information that comes to us is going to come through that distorted lens and it becomes our belief system yeah the hardest part is learning how to regrind that lens as you get in new information and being open to the new information I'm laughing because hearing you talk is like hearing myself. This is what I've been talking about this part for so long. I call it, we, we're, we're perceiving reality, I call it, through a fragmented lens. And it's, it, it separates. And we see things in these pieces and we think it's the whole. And we're not aware of the, you know, the whole picture. So we latch on to one perspective and think this is the way it is. And um, I love the way you put that, that we, the, 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 the trick now is to regrind and look through a new lens, a, a lens that of... of not just so much different, but expanded. It's not, let's substitute this for this. Let's just expand so we can have heightened awareness. Yeah, exactly. Thank you yeah. so much. You know, Corey, uh, it, it's always good to, to see you. And your message is just, it resonates with so many people. I just want to thank you for your, your truly your courage uh, to step out and do this. And I know that you enjoy it. And that's a big part of why you do it. But it's also courageous because we have family. We have friends. There's people that are are you know very beautiful and intelligent people themselves but they must look at this and i know i deal with it in my own life and it does take courage but in the long run i think um i'm still expecting an intervention on my side for the family i was thinking about that that i may be dealing with that soon too but i think that the deep down our family knows our sincerity and that we're focused and that it's all verifiable now this is not just some out there you know obscure thing it's actually becoming more and more clear that it is a part of reality. The more they see us changing and the more that they see that we're not behaving as though we're insane, that's going to open up possibilities in their mind as well. Well said. The best way to show it is to just do it yourself. Just just be, yeah. the, be the example that you want to see in the world. Um, where can our readers find you? Um, if they want to watch Cosmic Disclosure, they can go to blueavians.com. You can watch several episodes for free. And uh, we ha also have a website, Sphere Being Alliance. That's where you can find most of my information. And most recently, I didn't really go into detail, but we're, we've created a graphic novel on my experiences that we're going to start as one of the first publications of our media corporation. So uh, the website for that is comic, C-O-M-I-C, disclosure.com. And um, you'll see a lot more of the art and some of the fundraising we're about to do. Um, some interesting fundraising to, to help do uh, a Kickstarter for the company. Well, I know that I want to get involved in that and, and do anything I can to help. And I know a lot of our readers out there are going to be fascinated with the comic. And that's what I what I was talking about with the media company is it's, it's truly you're creating an empire. So this is also a branch of that. This is what you're talking about here. Exactly. It all sounds fantastic. And this is just like I said, it's just the uh, beginning. We're building so much momentum. And uh, I know that our readers out there are going to want to want to want to connect with you. So I'm glad that you were able to share all this with them. And uh, I'll see you down the road. I know we're going to be meeting up in Northern California soon for the uh, 
for the expo. I look forward to seeing you there. I look forward to it too. Take care, Corey. Right, you too. You've been listening to Spiritual Biz Chat with Kimberly Masca. Inspiration for a spiritual.